It's important that you understand the negotiation process when you're selling your home. It doesn't end when you sign the purchase agreement with the buyer. You have to understand that through the inspection period, the contingency removal, right up to the close of escrow, there's negotiation going on, and we're going to help you learn about that in this video. Hello, I'm William Smith with the William Smith Luxury Group at Coldwell Banker Realty, and thank you for joining us. Let's go ahead and get started. So now we come to the negotiation part. If you have all the information up front, the buyers and the sellers can agree on a price. Now, when there's a pest report and there's $13,000 worth of work that's to be done, it's an as is a sale. Now, 17 days of inspections that the buyer has the right to review the reports with their contractors or uh, their inspectors. Now, the 17 days come and they can remove their contingency. Now, if they come back and say, well, you know what, uh, this report uh, that you gave us was $13,000, uh, we think we should have you pay for that in the request for repairs. Well, you've taken the wind out of the sales by saying, wait, we told you that up front. We negotiated an as-is uh, an as -is offer. So we're not going to do that. And because you sold it as-is, you don't have to do that, even if it's asked for. Now, if it turns out that they do their own inspection and the first inspector missed $3,000 worth of work uh, and the buyer's inspector found it, well, okay, then you might have something to talk about. It's pretty rare that that would happen, but if it does, you've eliminated a negotiation because so often if you do an as-is sale, and then the buyer gets the inspection and now the inspection comes back, they'll want you to pay that $13,000. And that isn't what the seller had in mind when they didn't as his sale. So upfront, having all this information available for the buyer saves the seller money. So sellers, remember, I call it a power pack. That's all the reports and all the necessary uh, disclosures upfront, even before the buyer sees the property. It'll save you money in the long run, and it's something I highly recommend. So now the offer's been negotiated. So next on my list, um, be available, especially during marketing, to have showings happen quickly. 24-hour uh, notice is needed sometimes, especially if, if you have a tenant. But if, if, if it's just uh, you don't want to be bothered and you don't want uh, to be uh, inconvenienced with a surprise showing, I'm going to suggest if you really are motivated to get that property show, shown, the more exposure that your listing agent can get you, the better. But don't put all these restrictions on them so they can't show the property. And uh, the more exposure you have, the the more likely you're going to get your price or a price higher than if you have low exposure. So exposure equates to higher value because you have more people with eyes on your property. So be available. Now, once you get into escrow, make sure that the buyers have access at the drop of a hat with their inspectors because that 17 day inspection period goes by very quickly. And in order to meet the uh, rate locks and all the other things that go on, you need to make sure that that buyer can get done what they need to get done. Because every time the interest rate goes up at 1%, creates a huge amount of increased uh, monthly payment and that might make the uh, the buyer not qualify for what they uh, what they uh, thought that they could afford with the down payment that they have available to them. the ratio in the million million five range is that uh, for every one percent goes up you have about ten percent less buying power or borrowing power so that's something that the sellers need to be aware of to help your buyer accomplish what they need to get accomplished. So now the inspection period is coming to an end and the buyer has discovered some things that they want to ask you to contribute to. Now, there could be any number of reasons why they're doing that. But when they come with you with an ask, take a look at what they're asking for. Are they asking for a reduction in price? Are they asking for the repairs that they discovered that they didn't know about before to be repaired? Are they asking for a contribution 
to um, their closing costs so they have more money available for repairs they weren't expecting. Now, if it's sold as is, then you have, as a seller, the right to say no. Now, there's two paragraphs in the California Association of Realtors uh, Residential Purchase Agreement, we call the RPA. There's two sections in there, 10A and 10B, and they have to do with governmental retrofits and violations, certifications, and inspections. And most buyer agents check off the seller to pay for that. I'm not going to be popular with a lot of buyer agents, but I always counter 10A and 10B to be a buyer expense for a offer to be truly as is, because those are the only two paragraphs in the RPA that is going to be a potentially a blank check. Now that doesn't exclude that if there's something discovered, a violation, let's say on a on a 40 year old construction that had no permits and all of a sudden the city gets involved with wanting to get it upgraded or permitted. Those are some unexpected expenses and there should be some conversation being done. But for the most part, uh, the, the requirements are restricted to toilet retrofit, uh, making sure that you have smoke detectors in, uh, and CO2, uh, CO2 detectors and uh, hot water heaters that are properly strapped for earthquake protection. Those kinds of things are all things that fall under that governmental requirement section in 10A and 10B of the contract. And it's usually $1,000, maybe $2,000. So it's not a lot of money. But when there is a surprise with a violation or something that's going to cause a lot of expense, You need to be aware as a seller that you need to protect yourself with some sort of limit. The other thing, too, is if you do agree to a toilet retrofit, you might want to buy a $400 Kohler and the buyers might want you to buy a $1,000 Toto toilet because you have to change the toilets from what most of the homes have at 1.6 gallons to 1.28 gallon, uh, which is what the uh, requirements are here in most of Monterey County. So Those are some of the things that can be done with a cash contribution or a limit, and then the buyers can do whatever change they want. The Monterey Peninsula Water Management District has a 180-day extension, so that if you're going to remodel a bathroom and you're going to change the color of a toilet, then you'll want to, as a buyer, have the budget contribute to uh, the future remodel and not have somebody put in a hundred dollar Glacier Bay from Home Depot just to fulfill the requirement. So those are some of the things that can be talked about with the governmental retrofit. But remember, that is a blank check sellers if you don't handle it right. So let's say that the request for repairs has been negotiated. The buyer uh, asks for $13,000 and the seller says, no, I'll give you $3,500. Once you get that negotiation done, get over that hurdle, now you are wait for the appraisal contingency. What if the appraisal doesn't come in? Well, we, uh, we've got to talk about what happens. If the seller says, well, I'm not going to lower my price. Well, the seller doesn't have to lower the price, but do you want to lose the buyer? Uh, if you can replace the buyer and you can get your higher price, then you just say, well, I'm not going to do anything. But let's say you can't replace the buyer easily and you're ready to get this thing sold. So the appraisal is $20,000 too low. Go ahead and compromise. Maybe the seller contributes $10,000, the buyer contributes $10,000. Maybe the buyer is going to be stubborn. They said, I'm not going to buy it for one penny over that appraised value. It might die. Well, at that point, the seller has to make a decision. Do we sell it for appraised value or do we move on and find a new buyer? The buyer still has contingencies until they, in writing, actively remove the contingency that is still in the contract. So beware sellers that if you decide to cancel the escrow because the seller's not performing uh, or the time has run out, you've given them their 48 hour notice to perform or quit and they still haven't come up with a solution to the appraisal problem or the uh, inspection uh, request for repair problem, the seller can go ahead and cancel at that point 
giving them a notice. Usually it defaults to 48 hours. And if you have a backup offer, then you tell that backup offer, hey, gear up, gear up. you might be in first place soon. So if in fact that part of the negotiation starts to falter, there are some things that can be done to remedy it. So let's say that everybody's happy. The $3,500 has been agreed on, request for repairs, the appraisal came in at value and uh, the loan has been approved. So all contingencies have been removed. So the active status was when the property was on the market. The contingency period is called active contingent. AC is the status in MLS. So the buyer can um, rest assured that only backup offers can be taken during that time, but sellers can be protected by having buyers put in backup offers during that inspection period, because it's not a firm deal yet. It's only a maybe at the, that point. So then the uh, contingency period is over. The contingencies have been removed to everybody's satisfaction. And now it goes to pending status. That's P in, uh, <clears throat> in um, multiple listing. Now, something that I've noticed, uh, Zillow doesn't put pending properties in Zillow anymore. The uh, contingent properties, the AC status, they do. So sometimes you'll get the telephone call. Hey, I noticed the property is not contingent anymore. Is it available? Can I buy it? Then um, sellers, the reason your property doesn't show up on Zillow is because that that pending status for a week or two uh, is the time that it's not being reported. And I say Zillow. I'm not sure uh, if all the different um, um, MLS uh, reporting services had the same situation, but I knew, do notice that I get that occasional call saying, what happened to the properties? Is, is it still available? So once it is sold, then it shows up as sold in, in all the places that, that you see sold listings, including Zillow. So those are the things that happen during uh, the different phases of the uh, MLS status changes. Active, AC, active contingent, P for pending, and then sold. I'm William Smith with the William Smith Luxury Group. Please, in your comments, ask more questions. I can update our video content. If I've missed some, I can give you specific information. And besides that, I love hearing from you. So subscribe to our channel, look for the next uh, video, and I look forward to serving you. If you have questions on any of this as a seller, we'll be happy to do that and watch for our video on what a buyer should do in order to go through the same process. William Smith signing out. Thank you for joining me and thank you for watching our YouTube channel.